When we deal with combustible substances, substances that can burn in air, it is very important to consider their fire-producing capabilities and ignition-related characteristics, such as their auto-ignition temperatures. The auto-ignition temperature of a substance is the lowest temperature at which that substance automatically or spontaneously ignites. We have need for an external ignition source such as a flame or a spark, usually considered in normal atmospheric air. In other words, the auto-ignition temperature of a substance is the minimum temperature at which out of nowhere flames appear and that substance ignites or catches fire or bursts into flames. This is to say, auto-ignition temperature of a substance is the lowest temperature at which that substance is hot enough to start its self-sustaining combustion on its own with no need for for an initial A from an external ignition source. Many substances can have spontaneous combustion in air and like other chemical reactions here also, temperature is a key factor in determination of spontaneity or not spontaneity of combustion or whether combustion can happen or not or its requirements for occurrence. Like many other chemical reactions, in a combustion also, reacting particles or molecules should overcome an energy barrier to start combustion or in other words, they would require to be supplied with an activation energy needed for start of combustion. In this regard, we can consider three different possibilities at three different ranges of high, intermediate and low temperatures. At high temperatures, in fact, at temperatures higher than auto-ignition temperature, kinetic energy of reacting particles or molecules is high enough to help them overcome energy barrier or activation energy and start combustion. At intermediate temperatures, at temperatures lower than auto-ignition temperature but higher than flash or fire point, kinetic energy of reacting particles or molecules is not high enough uh, to be used to overcome activation energy required to start combustion. But an external ignition source such as a flame can provide required energy for some reacting particles to start combustion. And after the start of combustion, as combustion is exothermic and produces and releases energy and heat and therefore increases temperature and kinetic energy of its surrounding particles, combustion can continue or can be self-sustaining with no more need for external ignition sources. At low temperatures, at temperatures lower than flash or fire point, we cannot have self-sustaining combustion even with the help of external ignition sources. As temperature is so low, and reacting particles or molecules are so cold with so low amount of kinetic energy that any additional energy from an external ignition source or any possible limited brief combustion 
would just dissipate by warming up surrounding particles and increasing their kinetic energies, but not to that amount required to overcome activation energy and start combustion. Here it is good to consider that at any given temperature, there would be particles with low kinetic energies, particles with intermediate kinetic energies, and particles with high kinetic energies, as it is described by uh, continuous probability distribution of Maxwell Boson distribution. Also, by increase of temperature, both average kinetic energy of particles and number of particles with high kinetic energies would increase, where particles with high enough kinetic energies can overcome energy barrier or activation energy and start combustion. When we increase the temperature of a mixture of a combustible substance in air at a high enough temperature known as the autoignition temperature of that substance, they would be a suitable high enough number of high energy particles to overcome activation energy and start combustion. And generally, long before reaching that, they would be a suitable high enough average kinetic energy for all particles together to sustain combustion after its start with the help of energy released by combustion itself. Here, the suitable high enough number of high energy particles to overcome activation energy and start combustion and therefore Autoignition temperature could depend on other factors in addition to type of the combustible substance under analysis. Consequently, autoignition temperature is not an intrinsic physical property but depends on measurement methods and precise test conditions. Autoignition temperature can be affected by pressure, shape and size of container, contaminants, surface properties, etc. For example, generally autoignition temperature decreases by increase of pressure and therefore it is altitude dependent. As another example, addition of inert gases such as carbon dioxide or nitrogen gases generally increases autoignition temperature by diluting or altering thermal conductivity, specific heat or diffusivity. It is useful to consider autoignition temperatures of some common combustible substances around us or in laboratory. Many organic compounds, especially even those with low flash points, have relatively uh, high autoignition temperatures at the range from 200 degrees Celsius to 600 degrees Celsius. For example, acetone has an autoignition temperature of 465 degrees Celsius despite its low flash point of minus 20 degrees Celsius. Or any alcohol or ethanol has an autoignition temperature of 363 degrees Celsius despite its relatively low flash point of 13 degrees Celsius. Or butane has an autoignition temperature of 287 degrees Celsius despite its low flash point of minus 16 degrees Celsius. We might find some trends between autoignition temperatures of compounds belonging to the same group. 
For example, for alkanes with low carbon numbers, generally auto ignition temperature decreases by increase of molecular mass and chain length. And also is higher for branch chain alkanes than for state chain alkanes. For instance, 537 degrees Celsius for methane, CH4, the main constituent of natural gas, versus 204 degrees Celsius for ethane, C7H16, or 206 degrees Celsius for octane, CAH18. And also 225 degrees Celsius for straight chain hexane, versus 264 uh, degrees Celsius for branch chain to methyl pentane or 405 degrees Celsius for branch chain to to dimethyl butane. In many cases, including gasoline, diesel and hydrogen gas, for example, due to much lower flash or fire point than auto ignition temperature, we should be more worried about the start of fire by an external ignition source such as a flame, rather than start of fire due to heating and crossing auto ignition temperature. But still, auto ignition temperature can be of serious concern especially at elevated temperatures, such as those of a hot home oven. On this matter, substances with auto-ignition temperatures lower than or near room temperature are especially important and of great concern as fire hazards. In this regard, we have the term Pyrophoric, where GHS, Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals, considers a pyrophoric gas as a flammable gas that is liable to ignite spontaneously in air at a temperature of 54 degrees Celsius or below. And a pyrophoric liquid or solid as a liquid or solid which, even in small quantities, is liable to ignite within five minutes after coming into contact with air. For example, white phosphorus with an auto ignition temperature of 38 degrees Celsius is a pyrophoric solid which should be stored under water to avoid its spontaneous ignition in air. Here, it is important to consider that auto-ignition of combustible substances is generally a very complex phenomenon, different from substance to substance and possibly depending on many factors. In this regard, one important common phenomenon is paralysis of combustible substances during heating before their auto-ignition, where Paralysis is thermalysis or thermal decomposition, usually considered uh, for exposure to high temperatures in an inert environment. For example, in the case of wood, by heating and increasing the temperature of wood, it will begin to have paralysis from below 200 degrees Celsius and will begin to produce flammable gases at temperatures above, above 300 degrees Celsius before its auto-ignition at higher temperatures. Another important common aspect of auto-ignition is its dependence on size of grains and surface properties. For example, 
freshly cut small particles of many metals and alloys such as steel or pyrophoric or easily auto ignite in air where this is used in for fire making in fire steel or film plant mechanism in fire arms as another example of other possibilities we can consider drying oils such as linseed oil uh, poppy seed oil palm oil prilla oil walnut oil where drying oils harden to a tough solid after a period of exposure to air at room temperature Due to its slow exothermic chemical reaction with oxygen of air resulting in crusting and polymerization. Rags, clouds, and paper soaked in drying oils are fire hazards as they might auto ignite after a few hours in contact with air. Due to temperature increase because of heat produced by the drying and hardening process. Anyway, here we can see what auto ignition temperature is, how it is important in dealing with combustible substances, and what auto ignition temperatures some common combustible substances around us or in laboratory have. This is interesting, isn't it?